I'm David. And we're here to talk to you today about... Durability. And... Coil silica. 1278. We're also working too, sorry. So, um, we live in the great state of Colorado. David? True or false? True. What's one of our biggest problems here in the great state of Colorado? Oh, we... We've got lots of ASR problems. We've got all, all kinds of problems that we've got salts on the roads, all kinds of problems that relate to the life cycle, the uh, durability of concrete. Durability of concrete. Yeah, and it, it's not like we have a lot of choices for mature technologies that can mitigate, especially things like ASR or sulfate attack. I mean, we used to rely on class F fly ash a lot out here. Yeah, no when, doubt. When I first got here, we were using 10 to 15 percent. Uh, a few years ago, we were up to 30 percent, 35 percent in some areas of Colorado. Now we're floating around what 20, 25 percent. Yeah, 20 is a pretty common number for sure. 14. What did you say, David? I said 20 is very. 20. Yes. 20 is very common. Very, very common. Um, you know, one of the things that I found is that despite the fact that we're not getting the volumes or the uh, 370 for the tier, uh, the volumes or the quality, people don't stop making concrete. No, we're always going to make concrete. We're always going to make concrete. Yeah. And what that means is we're ultimately increasing our waste output, right? Because the concrete doesn't last as long. Right, we had a, I had a buddy of mine, remember I asked you? Called me up, a buddy from the military called up on a Friday. <laughs> it was a Friday. It's always a Friday afternoon. I know. And said, hey man, can you write me a letter? And I said, no. No, I said, heck yeah, I can write you a letter. <laughs> Whatever you need, buddy. And he said, okay, I've got a, a 200 yard pour on Monday, 369. I've got a 200 yard pour on Monday. Uh, my uh, ready mix provider can't get any fly ash. Um, can you write a letter that says I don't need to use fly ash on my, my ASR concrete? And I said, No. No. <laughs> because my principal engineer would say, No. The better question is, why is he stuck in this predicament? Well, there's just less and less fly ash available. 1700? There's less and less fly ash available, but David, there's colloidal silica. And that, that's what our, our discussion is supposed to be on today. There is colloidal silica for many different failure mechanisms that we feel in the concrete industry. They're readily available. The, tech, the, the research has been done on a micro level, on a macro level, in the lab, in the field. What's the big deal? Like what, 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 why are we seeing this in the industry? Why are we seeing? Why aren't we seeing the colloidal silica take its place? I wish I had a really good answer for you, John. <laughs> so do you have a really bad answer? Because I have a really bad answer. Yeah, people are like, in my experience, I've never used this before, and uh, I don't trust it, and it costs money, and it's going to add to my cost, and I don't know my people know how to use it, will get stuck in my truck. Just, you know, there's more. There's more. <laughs> there's more of that, but that, that's really what it is. And, and the harsh reality is, at a certain point, you're not going to have a choice anymore. Those, those excuses, well, I've never done this before, I've never used it. Have you ever done this test? Well, you've never done this test with my concrete. These ASTMs that we're all relying on, um, those tests in the, fi in, in the, in the field, in the, in the lab, the samples too, they can be manipulated. Yeah, John, I've said this before, you know, um, I'm a data guy. Right. I won't make decisions unless I have data. And there's data ad nauseum. Oh, uh, we've got data. It's just our lab alone. I don't know how many hundreds of tests we've run, you know, that show every time that closed silica is an improvement. And if it was just our lab, okay, you can call BS bad, bad science. science. Yeah. But there are labs all over the world, all over the continental United States, throughout the last decade plus that show the efficacy of this product. So if you're one of those naysayers, like, well, you haven't done this yet, you got to do, you know, C14, blah, 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 with my mix, you're stalling. Yeah. Converse to what I just said, 
if I have data, I should be willing to make a decision with it. And that's the tough part. That's right. Because when you recognize the data, then you have to, as the civil engineer, the engineer for the people, your job is to look at that data and make a decision. That's right. We make decisions that are to the benefit of the public. And, you know, longer lasting concrete, gee, I don't know, that seems like a benefit to the public to me. You know, it's stronger, more durable. Uh, and if you work on an Air Force installation or a, a flight line or an airport, it's like less foreign object debris. Right. Less foreign object damage. Less time that people are on the flight line or the taxiways cleaning it up. Yeah, it's more critical there and more frequent there. We have the same problem in highways. I mean, you know, yeah. chip, tight, chip windshields and, and whatnot. So, yeah, I just, facing volumes of data, it seems like we should be able to make this decision. Make the decision today. <laughs> and if you have any questions, let us know. i got to go put some samples away. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks for joining us today. Be sure to like and subscribe. Ding that bell for notifications. Go concrete. Go concrete. Be <laughs>